Hello, good people of the architecture world. Welcome back. I'm unsolicited Steph, and I have another video for you, finally. <laughs> I know that in my last video, and probably every other video before that, I said that I was going to try and record and release more regularly, but you should know by now never to trust a word that I say because I can never really stick to a schedule. Although, I'm going to try again. Uh, hopefully, that will work. Years ago I accidentally made a quite successful video. I, I didn't accidentally make it, I intentionally made it, but I didn't mean for it to be successful. Uh, about InDesign, and it turns out that a lot of people like really want to know about uh, software stuff. So today, because hopefully you enjoyed that video, you found my channel and you're going to subscribe to it, um, I'm going to do another video about Photoshop and a great Photoshop tip that you can use for your drawings. Video here and there, I've talked about how it's great to scan in your own sketches and include them in your panels, but um, maybe when you scan them in, maybe they're on yellow trace, maybe they're on white trace, maybe they're not super tidy, so you don't really want to use them as presentation drawings. But I'm going to show you a quick tip on how to scan those in, tidy them up and even vectorize them to make sure that you can use them and they look really clean and nice all the time in your panels. So let's get to it. I've forgotten how to screen record. Let me just refresh my memory on how to do that before I keep recording. And I still didn't do a very good job, I'm sorry. So this drawing is genuinely something that I did for my presentation um, in my very last submission for last term at uni. Uh, it's a sketch that I made of a kind of a diagram to show the co overall concept. The original drawing was on yellow trace and I had used black pen and green pen and then I wanted to scan it in and tidy up the lines and rather than having green pen I wanted to make the green pen blue because the rest of the colours in my concept and in my presentation were a mixture of blue and other other colours but green wasn't part of it so I wanted to change the green. So here we go, we get started. What we do is we open up our, our file and first things first we want to check if this layer is locked. So first of all I'm going to click on the little lock and it's going to unlock the layer. We can rename the layer if we want to but for right now uh, I'm going to leave it as it is. The next thing we're going to do is adjust the... actually <laughs> the best tip we're going to do is to kind of mask the background layer. So all of this whitish, yellowish stuff, what we're going to do is go to select and we're going to select the color range. So here we can use the eyedropper to select a sampled color, which is going to select all of the color, all of those colors in our, in our image. So if I select this black line here, it's going to kind of select some things. I use this fuzzy fuzziness slider to um, adjust how much of the image it's selecting. But because it's kind of a bit uh, rough and ready around the black, I might try and select what looks like this whitish yellow color and then um, remove that from the image so that we're just left with the line work. So I select that and I click OK. It's going to select all of that color for us. Then rather than deleting, which is going to uh, completely erase that information, we're just going to use a mask. So we're going to mask that. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to invert the selection. So control shift I, and then we're going to mask all of that information. So we can see that now we're left with the line work. It looks a bit fuzzy and this green pen. The next thing we're going to do is adjust the levels down here. And I'm going to select levels. Then we can use, um, over here, we can use these, we can toggle the levels here. So if we can muck around and we can see that if we go to the left, the lines fade out. And if we go to the right, the lines get darker. We don't want them to be too dark because then we're going to lose our green color. So I'm going to sharpen them just so that the lines are nice and black and the green is still showing green. And I'm going to bring the top level down a little bit too. That just, uh, that really increases the contrast between the lines. So we can see that we're going pretty well here. So that gives us a little more contrast on our page and we can see what we're working with. So we can see that the black lines are coming up really sharply, the greens are still showing and everything else looks pretty good. Before I change this green color, I'm going to just add a few things to the mask so that these lines where I tested the pens up here aren't showing and there was a little box that I drew in the corner, bottom left corner. 
So I'm going to select this black area, which is our layer mask, and I'm going to make sure that my, my brush is set to black, and I'm going to press B to activate my brush. I'm just going to get like a nice hard round brush, and I'm going to make it pretty reasonable size. And I'm just going to add to the mask, my opacity is only 50%, so I'm just going to crank these up to 100, and maybe I'm just going to increase that a little bit. And what that does is enables us to take out those lines without removing them from the document completely. It's called non-destructive editing, and I think that it's something that I didn't really learn until later in the piece, and I wish that I'd learned earlier. And if I turn off the background, we can see that we've still got this lovely um, clear image. So now that all of our line work is looking really nice and the background has been sort of eliminated, uh, I want to change the green color to be more of a blue color to match with the rest of my presentation. So what we're going to do is pick up another, add another adjustment layer. We're going to use hue slash saturation. And just in this master hue slider here, I'm going to zoom in on this green so you can really see what's going to happen. I'm just going to drag it towards the blue until I find a nice color that I like. And I feel like this color here is closer to everything else that I have in my presentation. I'm also just going to drag down the saturation a little bit because I don't want it to be super blue. So I'm just going to drag saturation down just a touch. And now we can see that it's a very tidy looking image with lots of this lovely blue color rather than that really like green, bright green pen, which didn't match with the rest of my presentation. I think that I'm going to leave that here for now and soon I'm going to do a tutorial about how to transform this line work into a vectorized line work in Illustrator so that you can scale your image without losing any of the fidelity of the image. But I feel like that's a tutorial for another day. So here, here is a little snapshot, ah, snapshot of how I used these, this diagram and the way that I tidied up that image in Photoshop on my actual presentation slides. Righto. Thank you for watching and I hope you found it helpful. If you did find it helpful, please like this video and also subscribe. I promise, 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 promise from the bottom of my heart that I'm going to try and record more videos for you guys because I don't know, I really enjoy it when I find the time. Um, I've literally pushed my sewing things to the side just to make this video for you guys today because it's been, it's been on my mind. It's really been on my mind. I have been me, you have been you. This has been a wonderful time and join me again next time for more videos about architecture stuff. Bye! Do you like my dress? <laughs>